doing three things basically. The first was to look at relationships amongst all the extant birds, all of today's birds. We wanted to figure out how they're related to each other, what's the genealogy for these groups of birds. Secondly, we wanted to determine something about how old they were, determine their ages. And the third part of the study, we wanted to find out if whole genomes, genome scale data sets would really provide sort of the magic bullet that people have hoped it would in terms of determining the relationships. So those are the three uh, broad aspects of the, of the study. Our most novel finding was that within the, this group I've talked about as neo-aves, including the vast majority of today's birds, we found a basic division between two groups which we've had to name and we've called them Columbia and Passera. And the Columbia includes all the pigeons and doves, as well as sand grouse and mesites and grebes and flamingos. And the other group, Passeria, includes everything else. The earliest diversification within birds happened over 90 million years ago, so it's a very ancient group. The earliest split within neo aves is more on the order between 72 and 66 million years ago, so that's right at the end of the Cretaceous. And that diversification is really younger than people had thought prior to this analysis with a very large data set. So we've kind of moved the ages up closer in time to the present. Our efforts to get whole genomes for 48 new species of birds really has paid off because it has allowed us to resolve some of these relationships within this diverse group that I've mentioned called neo aves And we found that as we added more data to our data sets, we got increasingly a clearer picture and better statistical support for the nodes. And so what we found too that's interesting and that supports some earlier work is that falcons in fact are relatively closely related to songbirds. The only bird group that's inside that relationship are the parrots. So you've got all the songbirds being most closely related to the parrots and then most closely related to that group are the, the falcons. One of the other findings is that, in fact, raptors are not a single group that arose once, but a group that has two independent origins. And in fact, the, the falcons are very much different from the hawks and eagles. They are not each other's closest relatives. So that's uh, independent origins for the raptorial lifestyle. So it was a very relatively deep split that separated those two groups. As people are looking outside and seeing, seeing birds in their backyard or doing Christmas bird counts, it's worth noting the extent to which human behavior now has an influence upon avian populations and that maintaining this diversity of unique lifestyles that we see is increasingly dependent upon human beings and their ability to do, to practice wise stewardship of natural habitats. So we have sort of received these different forms of birds over evolutionary time periods into the present and what their future might be in a way is dependent upon our own wise stewardship of the environments.